Hey guys, today I wanted to show you a new book that I've got, a new second-hand book that is, and it's by Linda Kitson, and it is about the Falklands War. It's a visual diary, it's her sketches um, while she was out with troops in the Falklands War. So what I like about this book, first off, is that it's massive, <laughs> and that makes me really happy because there's nothing worse than looking at a very small book of someone's art, sketchbook, drawings, etc. I just find it really hard to see actually what's going on, but this book um, is huge. So I just compared it there with a, a sheet of A4 paper and you can see, yeah, quite how big it is. So I got this book secondhand. I bought it through Amazon, like their secondhand function through like another bookseller or secondhand bookseller. Um, and it's been on my list for ages, but I just haven't got around to actually getting it. And now I'm back in the UK, I'm kind of enjoying being able to actually <laughs> get hold of so many more things than you can do in South Africa. So I'm trying to restrain myself, but I do find that I am picking up bits and bobs. So th these huge pages, you can just see everything, you know, um, just the perspective that she draws from really just pulls you right into the scene sometimes and it's just yeah uh, again just having this large format of her work is just beautiful you can see every stroke um so I really appreciate whoever made that decision for sure I think she actually draws on like really large pieces of paper so definitely makes sense to reproduce it as large as possible so anyway I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit Linda Kitson who is she right she's a British artist She's actually best known for her work as an official artist during the Falklands conflict. So she was actually commissioned by the Imperial War Museum in London. And she is the first female artist to have been officially commissioned to accompany troops into battle to the front line. So that's that's pretty cool. So in May 1982, um, Linda sailed off to the Falklands with over 3,000 men on the QE2 which is a very large luxury cruise liner. Um, so you can actually see that uh, right here in this picture, you can see the grand stairways coming down and just troops all over the entertainment deck, um, the posh entertainment deck doing their drills and stuff, which I, I find quite funny. I didn't actually know that something like this luxury cruise liner was com um, commandeered by the army or whatever to, to take it into war. So Linda actually followed the British troops, usually just a few, you know three or four days behind the actual action, um, obviously just for safety reasons and stuff like that. But she spent over three months in all kinds of crazy weather conditions and sub-zero temperatures. Um, and in that time, she made over 400 drawings, which is just kind of mind-blowing to me, to be honest. So after the ceasefire, she carried on drawing. She, she was drawing the aftermath of the fighting. Um, and she was just sort of focused on capturing the daily life of the troops and the conditions that they actually had to operate under. So I believe that during her time on assignment, she produced something like six drawings a day. I'm just picking this up for, from various interviews and things like that that I've read about her. And she typically uses like a combination of pen and ink, pencil and Conte crayon. So I think that's why she gets like this amazing contrast and these real blacks in her sketches is from that Conte crayon. What I love about these illustrations, they're just really simple and that's not to take anything away from Linda, but it's just like the speed that she captures things at and if you think about the war conditions and then also the temperatures and things like that, it's just amazing that she can capture what she does in a simple, articulate way, but she can show, you feel like you're there, you know, it's very intimate and I think it's some of the perspectives that she draws from, I suppose because she is actually there sitting on the ground, you know, right there. You feel that, you know, you're drawn right into the scene. So I find that that um, really interesting. And um, unlike a journalist or a photographer or camera crew, um, she doesn't really seem to seek out the sensationalist or dramatic moments. She said this in an interview, actually, that, you know, there were times when she saw like a uh, people missing limbs and blood and whatnot, but she didn't draw that, you know. And sometimes I think she says sometimes she questions that decision, but. I don't know, I find it an interesting and probably, well, a respectful decision, but also she just actually turned her focus more onto like showing how people exist within their surroundings and the experiences that they were sharing together and just more like that kind of, you know, the unromantic stuff, like the, the 
every day, like the really authentic kind of everyday grind of the war and what, you know, what the troops were going through and that kind of thing. So I found that really interesting reading about that decision that she made. So just as a bit of a side note, Linda Kitson is sort of like titled as the first official female war artist to be like sort of commissioned to actually and sent into battle with the troops but there are actually um, a bunch of other female war artists from the late 19th century and early 20th century and I just think they're worth mentioning here and you can actually go and look them up if you want to but there's Elizabeth Thompson, Gertrude Lees, Laura Knight, Anna Airy, Evelyn Dunbar, Mary Kessel and Arabella Dorman. So I'll put links to those, or I'll put the list at least um, in the description below if you guys want to check out some more information about them. Um, and I've got a quote here from, from Linda, which I found quite interesting. So I just want to read that out to you as well. She says, at Goose Green, I had to make a decision about what aspects of war I should record. So this is basically what I was talking about earlier. Um, my brief was to record the sites that might be recognised as common experiences. I decided that the horrifying sight of parts of human bodies, a helmet with a head still in it, pictorially sensational and relevant though they were, were not part of my brief. Neither were the war graves, which were recorded on news films and in photographs. I still question that decision. Would it have been a stronger cautionary record if I had used such shock tactics? So that's, that is basically what I said before, but that's just actually a direct quote from her. So Linda has more of her drawings over on her website, lindakitsondrawings.co.uk. I'll put that in the description below. I found this book really interesting, looking at her illustrations, reading the text about both the conflict, her experiences, and also her drawings and her experience as a war artist. So if this is something you're interested in even slightly, I really recommend this book because it's just wonderful to look at. So I'm not sure if it's out of print now. Um, I could only see it as like a secondhand item available to buy on Amazon. So I mean, look around if you want it. I'm sure there's a way to get it one way or another. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit different than what I usually do. I'm not sure I've done any... Well, I suppose I did a video on the five books that got me hooked on urban sketching. But yeah, I hope this has been interesting for you guys and I'll see you in the next video.